Hi, everyone. Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are in the country. Just want to welcome everybody to today's out of home office hours. Uh, this is the foundational level session today. Um, and uh, this is Scott Fischetti, and I'm here with, as always, Brian Shopper. Hello. Hey. So, um, so I just want to jump into it pretty quick today because there's a lot of stuff we're going to go over. And I would just want to give the kind of overview uh, uh, in case you, you know, just for everybody to be tracking along with what we're, the plan is for today and tomorrow. It's, it's a little different than we've been doing over the last handful of months. Um, it's not going to be driven by a use case. We really um, had gotten a lot of feedback that it, we, that it would be great to do a webinar that shows how we move you know, your current workflow from the legacy tools, so that being ADS and OPlan, and how do I do what I need to do in the Insight Suite, and how do I how do I run similar reports? So that's what tomorrow's advanced session is going to be about. And today we're going to set that up by walking through all of the updates and the changes that happened in the Insight Suite over the last month. Um, so uh, so that's how it's going to be. And and just to to um, talk about that a little bit more the advanced session that's not going to be the first time we're going to do that because because the, the workflow is um, changing uh, and there are a few more features and functionality that will be added that uh, we're gonna we're gonna want to go back to in, in a couple of weeks and just and show you that as well so um, but for today I'm gonna jump in and I uh, want to talk about some of the the changes and updates also as always if you do have any questions please don't hold them just Put them in the uh, the questions widget in the Zoom uh, interface, and we'll try to answer them in real time. And uh, you know, just make sure we're we're addressing them as soon as they come in as much as possible. So, um, so I'm going to jump in and just start talking about the some of the updates, and then Brian will do a walkthrough on uh, showing you how to use them and, and where they are in the Insight Suite. I do want to. I know we did talk about this last month, but I do want to just make a quick shout out. Of, out it shout out about it again sorry i'm tripping over my words today um so inventory explorer um you know was a popular feature that we had about a year ago that is now back and i just want to give a, a nod and a shout out that it that it is back and this is the public facing free tool and largely what it is for is if somebody is not a member oftentimes um, and needs to understand what inventory is available in a in a dma or a different market area they can use this tool to understand that and then use that to reach out to the operator who owns the media in that in that area so it's uh, it's, it's very similar in look and feel to the insight suite but it is largely, you know, very uh, limited in its functionality. It doesn't provide impressions or anything like that because, again, that's the benefit of membership. So, um, and to just quickly how you use that, you would enter your email address and you'll get an email, you'll get a passcode for a one-time use passcode to, to be able to log in and start using the tool. And you can even see the screenshot on the right there. Again, it looks very similar to the Insight Suite, but very a lot, a lot more limited in its functionality. So um, anyway, just wanted to make sure everybody's aware of that and wanted to start to now deep dive into the features and functionality updates that uh, came out as of um, you know, the February 3rd. So one of the key things too that, that we're excited about, and this will hopefully be a nice way that we'll be able to keep the channels of communication open with our members a lot, a lot more easily in terms of when updates come along. So there's, uh, you may have noticed that there's the little button, uh, the little bell in the upper right hand corner now, with the little alert, and so that that lets you know, and that's where we're going to be able to message in terms of updates that come out in the Insight Suite. And you could just click on the bell, and they'll open it up, and you could click on the alert available, and then when you've read it, if you want to get rid of so it doesn't keep the, the counter going, you can just X out the, the alert, and that'll go away. But that's where we'll, we'll announce all of the new updates. Uh, we'll also continue to talk about those in our newsletter and hopefully add a little bit more content around the updates. But this is where you can, this will probably be the first place where you can look and see if there's any new updates. So if you log into the tool and something maybe looks different, go to the, go to the, the alert area and you'll be able to find that information. And then the next thing I want to talk about is the um, hover descriptions are now available. So uh, in, a, in the inventory filter area, you can now hover over and get more of a little bit more information on 
the different media types, formats, the operator names, like what it, what is essentially this category. So it gives more description of those as well. And hopefully those are helpful. And again, any feedback on those is always welcome. If you're, um, you know, if something isn't clear, let us know. I mean, because we can tweak those and edit those. We want to make sure those are helpful and that they're, you know, adding value for, for all of our members. Another big area and one that Brian will, will talk specifically about is uh, updated inventory filters. So we have additional options. So this has gotten more broken out and hopefully more uh, helpful. So uh, options for, for media format types, media types, place types, and, 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 and many more. So again, this is uh, in, in preparation as well for some of the additional media formats that are coming into the tool as well. So obviously like place type is a, is a helpful one as we're start, as more and more uh, place-based inventory comes into the, the system. But it also allows for the ability for members. I'm, I'm just gonna skip back one slide because I think there, were, there was a nice uh, example here. So operator media name, right? So a lot of times an operator may have their own unique name for that. So Again, if you're used to calling, looking for it in, in terms of the operator media name, you can do that. Or if you, you know, typical, you know, the typical structure type or media type that traditional like built-ins or posters, you can use those types of filters to for that area. But again, uh, Brian will will talk more about that and, and show that in more detail as we go along. And also in terms of the media attributes. Um, We've been continually been adding to this as well. You know, right along we've had orientation and spot dimensions. Uh, illuminated hours is now now back. So if you if you're looking for something that's illuminated 24 hours, uh, you know you can do that. You can just slide back and forth on how do you and you know get the set of uh, illumination that you need for the inventory that you're looking for. We talked about rotating inventory last time. That's the the, the one below it. So uh, again, we'll we'll talk more about some of this in, in a moment coming up. And here's another feature that I think is, is really helpful. Um, as you're starting to create your plan, and this is specifically right now in the Explore module in particular, um, the screenshot that is, as you're picking your, you're signing your markets, uh, we wanted to make sure people were aware of what was happening or that, that, that this really indicates you're, you're picking where your audience is coming from. We're assigning the market is essentially the, the home location of your audience. And previously it would auto filter for, if you pick the New York DMA, it would also filter the inventory for that DMA. And we wanted to make sure people were aware of this, this action that was happening. So we, we, we put up a, a message to ask you to make sure like, do you want you know this, also to filter your, your inventory that you're looking at or that you're gonna be exploring for the same uh, geography. Because essentially, as you kind of play this out, this functionality out, you could be trying to look for people from New York uh, in a different market, so to speak. So, you know, maybe you're looking at inventory in Times Square, but you wanna reach people from Boston or Chicago. So you have the ability to, to do that now with the Insight Suite. Um, and we wanted to make sure people were aware of that functionality. Also in the uh, workspace module, there's a, a couple of really great um, updates there as well that we'll, we'll show you and talk about. So I'm gonna talk about the bottom of the screenshot first. So. Previously, you could plan using a uh, TRP plan goal, but now you can start to create uh, market plans based on a uh, in-market impression plan goal or a reach percent goal. And there's also additional um, metrics coming out of that, such as uh, I believe unique unique reach, uh, so and uh, reach percent. So th there's a lot more information uh, again, which we'll show you once we get into the tool. And then also thresholds as well, so you can start to create market plans. Uh, adding another layer of, of filtering to that as well. So in addition to just the TRP goals, et cetera, you can create, you know, I only want inventory that is, uh, you know, a, a certain target comp index so of, of 75 or better or whatever. So again, two, two new ways to help get your market plans even more refined. And there's some also um, additional information that's been added to the uh, in inventory detail sheets. So first is that that uh, where the red square is, the material type is now included as an attribute. And so the material types, again, being printed mesh, which is essentially like, you know, kind of your, your vinyls. And then there's digital as well as murals are painted, I believe. 
are the three options there as well. And then just below it, um, we got a bigger screenshot of that, is the opportunity overview is now back. So I know uh, people uh, were excited to, to have this back. So right now, it's focused on the top prison premier segments for that for a specific unit. But again, uh, we will be expanding that in the coming weeks and months. But right now it's back and gives you a sense of the other uh, PRISM premier segments that, are, that this unit over indexes for. So again, maybe helpful in prospecting. And another big update in the inventory details sheet are um, the average annual uh, day of week impressions are now available for each unit, as well as, um, you know, but annual average by hour of day impressions, and this is very similar to what we had, what was introduced in the the, the she beta software. Again, it's really it's just for that single unit. It's not to be it's not the seasonal data that will be coming you know later later this year. It is really just to help you understand the impression delivery for an individual unit, and really can help with um, like this one. I think is a great example here that I'm looking at. You can see that you know the impression. Um, you know, in the later half of the day, there's a bump in impression. So that may help guide with, you know, maybe this, uh, you know, this is where you'd advertise the, the Big Mac versus the Egg McMuffin. You know, it can help with messaging and, and guidance on, on that kind of stuff too as well. And again, very similar uh, in functionality and in information as to the, the sheet beta. Just want to check. Um, I know I've been talking for a while. Just want to see if there's any questions. Uh, yeah, we have. Yeah, we had one. It was um, basically a, a slide or two before this. Um, one more back, a, a couple more back. Uh, here is someone who's asking about what the difference between effective reach is one and three was the question here. Okay. Yeah, you know, an effective reach uh, typically is the um, the amount of like if you want to create a plan that that has like I want to I want to ensure that everybody has seen the 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 inventory three or more times or one at least one time so it's it's a way to 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 do that it was a it's a functionality that I believe is in it was in the original old plan functionality and you could create the the effective reach um, so essentially you want the plan to be around people that have seen it. You know, three plus times or four plus times. Um, this, this actually, I believe, this functionality, I think, will also be expanding as well. So right now, there's only the two options, but I think uh, you can do. Uh, we'll eventually be able to do more. I hope that 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 helps um, the explanation. Um, you know, we'll, uh, uh, and if not, let us know, and we'll I'll try to kind of explain it a little bit better again in a moment as we get into the tool. So another uh, another big uh, functionality that's back and one that I'm personally excited about um, is the ability to map the top zip codes and uh, top contributing DMA. So if you see on the left side of the screen and hopefully it's not too small, you can see the, the, in the inventory detail sheet, it, it always still it, it lists now the, the four top zip codes. But then you click the map it button and you could get a map of all of the zip codes that are generating at least one impression, you know, for uh, from that unit. And as you scroll over now too, you can see what the zip code is and the percent of impressions coming from that particular zip code as well. So um, that is, uh, I, I think, a really nice functionality and one that really I think helps us tell that movement story, you know, in, in the sense that, hey, yeah, this unit is located in this particular zip code, but you know what? It's generating the vast majority of its impressions from these other zip codes or a combination of other, other zip codes. So it really helps you kind of explain to, to a client potentially of like where their where their audience is coming from. You know, and this again, right now, this is for individual units. And you know, a lot of times you might get the question of, "Hey, can I do this for a whole package of units?" And yes, that that functionality is is coming down the line in the next uh, handful of months. Um, just wanted to let everybody know that. And then this is another area. Um, this is in the a uh, 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 kind of a. Uh, crop screenshot of the uh, explore module and you hopefully have noticed that there are uh, additional metrics now and uh, ho and different labeling so hopefully more clear labeling for our, for our members to, to, to know which which metrics are which and which are in market and which are total impressions and again just a caveat whenever you hear total impressions within the tool anywhere in the insight suite 
total impressions is always referring to person zero plus. So that's why we felt it important to make sure we were caveating and making sure people were aware of we were talking about total impressions versus in-market impressions. And again, this is something that uh, we'll talk about and Brian will we'll get more in depth on when we jump to the, uh, when we jump to the tool. So um, anyway, I'm going to hand it off to Brian. And uh, again, if you do have more questions, please keep them coming. We'll do our best to answer them in the moment. So great. OK, uh, thank you for bearing with us. We were switching seats there. Um, so yeah, as Scott mentioned, there are a lot of new features in the Insight Suite that we want to go through and talk about today. So I probably won't spend too much time in any one spot. So uh, if you have questions if, or if I go past something and you have some more questions, uh, just feel free to reach out and we can circle back to something. Um, so for those of you who might be new or haven't been in the Insight Suite before, uh, this is one of four modules within the Insight Suite currently. Uh, this is the Explore module. Uh, and this is a very graphic and uh, fluid approach to exploring inventory and really getting into certain areas and filtering out. Uh, and this is a very graphic approach to everything. Um, we also have, I'll come up here so we can see these descriptions. Uh, so that was the Explore module I just mentioned. Uh, the Workspace module, which we will talk about today as well, uh, is more of a planning hub and it ho it hosts the functionality of our two legacy systems, OPlan and ADS. Um, and we'll talk about that as well as we go through. Um, the places module is a points of interest module. Uh, and I'll, I'll touch on this just a little bit, but this is a great place to look up some retail locations or things like that. And then you can visualize them next to your inventory and make some custom maps and things like that. Um, so let's jump into the explore module and uh, I'll talk through just some things here before we go into an actual, <clears throat> excuse me, before we go into an example. Um, so as Scott mentioned, these metrics over here in the top right hand corner uh, are a bit more expanded than they were the last time we did one of these sessions. Um, I believe there were only three or four and now there's these six. Uh, as Scott said, uh, total impressions is always person zero plus. Uh, total is always, it, it, it only ever changes based on the inventory that you have filtered. But other than that, it's always person zero plus. Um, and I'll talk about all of these as we go through. But I always mention it's interesting to keep an eye on these as we filter and as we change our markets, because these evolve and these, these update uh, as we update our inventory. So it's always interesting to see how the metrics kind of summarize and update. Um, across the top here, we have these four tabs. And these are how you do pretty much everything in the Insights Suite, or sorry, in the Explore module of the Insights Suite. Um, the Define Target tab is broken out into three main functions. Select Audience is where you pick your actual target demographics or consumer profiles or Prism Premier segments. Um, and they're split up into three different categories. Population is largely census-based and somewhat in line with our uh, OPlan and ADS legacy tools. Um, Prism Premier is, uh, is Claritas's segmentation product. And all of, our, um, all of our audience data here comes from Claritas, but Prism Premier is their segmentation product. So every household in the US gets split up into one of these different segments. Um, and then finally, in the consumer profiles category, we have a, a large majority of the uh, available audiences in here. Um, of the 8,000 that are in the Insights Suite, this is where pretty much all of them live. There's, most of them are here. Um, and you can sort through these using a bunch of different categories. So retail spending, environmentalism, uh, finances, things like that. You can also search here um, and then, you know, see what you get from that. So that's the first function of the define target tab. Uh, the assigned market tab, as Scott was mentioning, is where you both can set your audience base and also filter your inventory geographically. Um, and it's important to remember that this can do both of those things. Um, but as Scott mentioned, you don't have to. You can set an audience base and look at different inventory if you wanted. Um, one of the new features that I'm going to talk about today is the ability to combine and make some custom markets. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, and then finally, in the Define Target tab, we have Schedule Delivery, which is just to change the campaign length. Um, and you'll see whatever you change here will reflect the metrics on the right-hand side and, and in all the reports. Um, and then to the right of that, we have Filter Inventory. Um, and this is basically just a large number of ways to get down from this 630,000 spots to as few as you want. Um, and we will talk through all of these. There's a lot of different things here. 
Um, and I'll, I'll go through as we sort of do our example and explain what each of those are. Um, next to that, we have layers and display options, which is pretty much how you control the actual map elements of the insights or the, of the explore module. Um, and you can create custom maps using saved uh, inventory sets or place sets and some other elements like that. And you can also, uh, using this tab, you can customize how your map looks as well. Um, and then it finally in the actions tab is a lot of things about exporting or saving or clearing your view, printing your view. Um, so if you make a custom map or anything like that and you want to print it for a project, um, you can come to print view here and then print and you can print to a PDF right from here. Um, so that's just kind of a basic overview. Um, I'm going to uh, do, an, a, do a walkthrough in just a minute, do uh, an example, but I just want to touch on the places module since I won't really be using it in my example. I just want to make sure I mention it so everyone knows you know, if you're in here what to look for. Um, so again, the places module is a points of interest module. Um, when you do your search, it starts nationally. So if I were to search Starbucks, it would show me all the Starbucks options in, or anything that remotely has to do with Starbucks in the US. And then from there, we can filter by location and geography and also industry type and brand and a lot of other things. Um, and there's uh, in past webinars and other videos, we have touched on this uh, a bit. So you, uh, you can always look at that if you want. Um, again, we won't touch on this one too much here, but I just wanted to make mention. And also just to put a plug in for the learning lab too, we, we also have some videos on, on mm -hmm. you know, on, on the whole module as well. So um, just wanted, one more plug for the learning lab. Um, okay, so let's, let's jump in and let's do an example. And uh, the example I built today is largely focused around using a lot of these new features and showing you what they can do. Um, so to start with that, I'm going to go to the define target tab. And the first thing I want to do is look at this new feature where you can create a custom market and you can combine markets. Um, so you can do this either by DMA, CBSA, or county. You can't combine within different market definitions, but you can combine as many as you want within that same type. So for DMA, uh, for this example, I, I was actually doing something yesterday and I made a custom market of Columbus, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio, and Dayton, Ohio, each of those DMAs. Um, and I thought it was just an interesting one. We don't do much in that area, and I want to wanna use that as my example today. So um, just so I look at only the DMAs in Ohio, I'm just going to type in OH first. Um, and that's just a quick little tip if you're in either the DMA, CBSA, or county. If you type in the state abbreviation, it'll usually help filter um, so you can get to your results quicker. So again, it was Columbus, Cincinnati, and Dayton that I wanted to combine. Um, and as you, as you click different options on, you can see they individually add up here. And you can deselect any ones you accidentally added or anything like that. Um, and then down here at the bottom, we have the option to add as individuals. So we could add each of these three individually and then switch between them. Or we could add them as a group, which is what I want to do here. Um, so again, this combination is a new feature. Um, but also a new feature, as I click this, you'll see this pop-up come up. Uh, and this is, like Scott was mentioning, basically the tool is just asking you, you know, you've set your audience base as this market. Do you also want to filter your inventory for this market? In this case, I do, so I'm going to hit yes. Um, and so this is going to filter out everything that's not within these three DMAs. And it's also going to set my in-market audience base as the audience of these three DMAs. Um, so... Let me, there we go, Let's zoom in a little bit. I just want to get a sort of visual on the overall market, get a sense of what we're looking at. And actually, as we did that, now that I've applied an audience, or sorry, applied a filter, in this case, a geographic filter, um, we've netted out a lot of inventory that we were looking at before. You can see here, uh, while well, this is, here we go, it's still loading. Um, so we've got about 9,000 units in our filter here across these three DMAs. And because we filtered our inventory, all of these metrics have changed. So our total impressions, which is person zero plus um, sort of total total, is 780 million. And so you can see our total in market and our target in market are both the same right now. Um, it's because I haven't set a more specific audience yet. Um, and the reason that there's a difference between the total impressions and the total in market impressions in this instance is just that there are across all of this inventory, 70 million weekly impressions that come from outside of these DMAs. So just so you know what's going on with those numbers there. Um, so I've got my market here. Um, let's go and look at uh, 
let me add an let me add an audience too. I want to look at persons eighteen plus, just sort of a a nice easy metric. Let's do that. And actually, as I do that, watch the uh, target numbers over on the right hand side change as well. Um, so these will now, because we're choosing a subset of the total population, we're looking at smaller numbers or different numbers. Hey, Brian, sorry. I, I just want to jump in and uh, there's a couple of questions that, that sure. come in and uh, just want to maybe we can pause and, and talk about some of them yeah, right sure. now. Um, just uh, I'm going to probably do them in a different order, but for the places module, can I upload my own store list? Um, so. At, at this point, uh, you you can't do that just yet. I know that's functionality, longer term functionality uh, down the road that um, we're we're exploring. But for now, uh, you 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 can't do that. So if you do have the list, you can uh, hopefully fairly easily, you know, just do the click the units that are the not the units but the locations that you're looking for click them on or off within the within the function with it within the, the tool itself so um and again i know we didn't dive deep into that today but there are some couple of videos you can go through and again if you do ever have any questions you can reach out to us at geek out and we could uh jump on a call and help help anybody out with that next question was uh about expanding the options for the number of weeks in campaign delivery oh yeah yep so there's a couple of things going on there uh, with that. So um, if you're working in the workspace and creating, um, you know, a, a scenario or a slash campaign within there, um, what is coming in the next? Uh, actually, I have it right here. Um, that should be by mid March. You'll be able to set up unique, um, you know, more um, more expanded time frame so even for with individual spots within a plan so that should be on its way by by mid-march so we know sometimes too and you know there are uh, different units might have different flight times that you want to have them you know within the campaign so so that is coming should be in mid-march uh for now you, we do have the the typical you know one one two four eight twelve i believe it's what's in the, the explore module if you are working in the explore module though that said if you need to, other, the metrics in that area, um, again, you know, it does not have reach or frequency in the explore module, that's in the workspace module. Um, you can just, uh, they're additive, so to speak. So you can just get one week and then if, it, if you need an odd number of like seven weeks, you can just, you know, do the one week and multiply it. So that's, that's one workaround for that in the, in the short term. Hopefully that's helpful, but just know that the ability to do, um, you know, uh, spot schedules is coming. And then apologies, there's one more question. Um, oh, are you looking to integrate in, in the actions tab and RFP action to send direct to vendors? Um, that is something um, to, to some extent we're, we're talking about and wanna work with our members to see what is, what is used what is needed by them or is there their own template that they want to be able to upload things like that but again that is um, a, a longer term um, feature functionality that um, you know that that's on the roadmap for you know possibly later this year so it's, it's not a close in it's not a close in uh, feature but it is something that we're discussing and trying to figure out how best we can help our, our members with at least some version of that Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah. So just to catch everybody back up uh, before I move on, we were, uh, we're looking at a combined market of the Columbus, Cincinnati, and Dayton, Ohio DMAs. And we are looking at persons 18 plus, and this is all the inventory still. I haven't filtered uh, any, any further than this. Um, I'm going to leave one week for now. Um, so I'm going to go to the filter inventory tab and actually start to get more specific with my uh, inventory here. And also this gives me a chance to sort of explain some of these new uh, inventory filters and talk about what they mean. Um, so as Scott mentioned, as if you've been in here recently, you might've seen there's a bit of a different layout to all this. Um, media and placement is most of the inventory filtering that you'll need, but a lot of it you can also do down here, some really important things like filter by operator or filter by location. Um, but there is a lot of, uh, this is all very specific to the actual media itself to filter on a bunch of different qualities of the media. So uh, I want to point out that, like Scott mentioned, there's all these new hover uh, information, things that pop up when you hover over. So 
Um, if you're ever in here and you're not quite sure what one of these is or anything like that, you can do that and that'll help. Um, so media class, basically all the media in here is broken out into three categories. Roadside is anything outdoors that's stationary, place-based is in venue, and then fleet is fleet and transit. Um, structure type refers to the actual structure that the frame is attached to. So in the instance of like a billboard or, or sorry, of a bulletin or a poster, that would be a freestanding structure because the frame and the structure itself are their own structure, they stand alone. But with street furniture or something, it's, it's a frame attached to something else. So with transit shelters or benches, that's, that's what the structure type would be, it'd be a furniture. Um, and then we have exterior walls, and then a lot of these are place-based. So interior wall, uh, you know, floor, elevator. So a lot of these are place-based um, as well. Um, after that, we have media type, which is, uh, is based on size, actually. So bulletins and posters are sort of of a specific dimension. Um, and then we have like panels, displays, junior posters, murals. So these are, these are all classifications based on size. Um, but if you wanna get a little bit more specific and jump to some you know, more specific, maybe a little bit more familiar names, if you come to this operator media name, we have each media type sort of explicitly listed out. So this is where you can get very specific with it. Um, but each of these filters will get you to the same result. There's, uh, I actually just yesterday made a video on this that we're going to be uh, sort of updating and making sure we have available to everyone. So this is, you know, knowledge that everyone can have. Um, and I mentioned in there that there are a couple different ways that you can filter down to the same thing, but you'll get the same results. So it's all kind of about how you find it works best for you. Um, for my example today, oh, sorry, really quick. Um, below that material, this is where we can pick either digital or non-digital um, or both. Um, and by default, it, it selects everything, so both. Um, and then place type and placement type are both for um, place-based media. So place type is the actual kind of venue that it's in. And then placement type is where within that venue you'll find the actual display. Um, so just so you know what each of, each of these are. Um, and for our example today, I'm going to look at non-digital posters. So uh, there's a couple different ways that I could do that. So I wanna start media, media class. I'm gonna start from the top down. Um, that's usually how I find the workflow works best, but you can really do it in, a, like I said, a few different ways. Um, so I wanna look at just the roadside inventory. So this should clear out any place-based um, and also fleet things. So this will clear all that out. Um, okay, and then below that, um, like I said, I could go about it a couple different ways, but I want to go to, I'll use the operator media name and I wanted just posters. Um, and I'm gonna click this posters because in here somewhere there will be di yeah, digital posters. So it's, it's explicitly listed out as two different ones. Um, I'm gonna go with just posters um, and then I'll hit apply. And so once that loads up, we can kind of see over on the right-hand side, uh, we're now just looking at the posters in the market, but we can also see sort of the count of inventory we're at. So we're still at about 3,000. This is a bit more than I want to work with. Um, so let's, let's take a look at some of the other uh, inventory filters that we could use. So um, we could filter by operator, and this always updates to be uh, reflective of whatever operators are in the market that you're in. Um, we could filter by location so I could get more specific with these. And sorry, Brian, sorry yeah. to interrupt. Um, just since you're talking about location, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a question related to, you know, can I get down to zip code if I want to filter sure. by, by that? So you can, and this is where you would do that. This is where you'd start to filter your inventory there. You can start to type in mm -hmm. the, the zip code. Let's see if anything popped up for Ohio. I don't know. I don't know if it will. Let me see if any zip codes would pop up. Oh yeah, so, there, so there So that's where you could um, do a filter by zip code as well. And that's filtering your inventory by, by, by zip code. And uh, you know, your audience would still be from the DMA or CDSA or County back then you selected. Cool. And also, I think I misspoke. I do wanna come back to one of the questions about the, um, I think I just misread the question because um, I was trying to do it quickly, but are you looking to integrate in the actions tab and RFP action to send direct to vendors or on inventory, or is this just a planning tool? So the tool ultimately really is more of a planning tool. We do want to be able to facilitate the, the interaction between, you know, operators and, and agencies as much as much as possible, but I do want to make sure that, um, you know, I'm not sure if the, the auto, like being able to send directly from the tool to the, uh, 
the, the operator will be a, a functionality, but we do want to, um, we do, will have um, things ultimately in the reporting area where, you know, maybe a, an agency has a particular uh, RFP template and, and things like that. So I apologize if I misspoke before, but I do wanted to, to come back to that question as I looked at it more closely. Um, and thank you all for the questions. It always helps make the, the webinars feel more fluid and, and really help like, really feel like we're helping. So um, if you have more, please keep sending them. Uh, and just uh, just to catch back up to where I was, so we still got a lot of, uh, a lot of posters here. I wanna net this down a little bit further. Um, so let's take a look at some of these media attribute filters because this is something I don't use very much, um, but you could, and there's a lot of a lot of reasons why somebody might want to use these. So um, within media attributes, we have an orientation filter, which has the primary primary and the interprimary directions here that you can filter by. Uh, spot dimensions you can filter based on size. So if you only want things of a certain foot, uh, you know, foot range, you could do that. Uh, illumination hours, so you can use these uh, these sliders to basically just set the hours that you would want to filter for. So if you only want things that are illuminated during certain hours of the day, uh, you can use that filter. Um, this is I'm actually glad I'm going through this so I can uh, talk about this rotating filter here because we've gotten a couple questions about this and I just want to make sure everybody knows what it is. Um, basically, a rotating the if something is rotating, it just means that its display moves at all. So a static vinyl billboard does not rotate, but something like a digital uh, a digital board or a tri-vision board or anything that's the actual message of it rotates or changes, that's what rotating is. Um, and you can also filter by audit status. So you can, uh, you know, depending on where in the audit process your inventory is, you can exclude or include things based on that. Um, and so for this one, let's try the orientation filter. I don't think I've ever used it. so. Let's say maybe I maybe I want to you know, I don't know if this is a realistic scenario, but maybe I want to get people who are coming from the south who are coming northbound or something like that, and I want south-facing boards only, just for this example. So let's take a look at what that would do. Um, so I have a feeling this will filter out quite a bit of them. Looks like a more manageable number. Let's see. Once this loads, and you can also see over here in the top right-hand corner, these numbers have changed quite a bit. Again, as we, every bit of inventory filtering that we do, this changes. Um, so 744, that's, that's a good workable number for me. Um, and we can always net it down a lot more than that, but I'm just gonna use this to start. Um, and you can use, uh, you can have a couple thousand uh, in your inventory set, I believe. I believe six is the maximum right now, 6,000. Um, so, if you have gotten yourself down to a group of inventory that you like, you can come over here to the save as drop down here. Um, and what you can do is you can save this as a new inventory set or you could add it to an existing one. And basically what an inventory set does, uh, it does a couple things for you. It, it'll, if it's something that you use a lot, you don't have to filter to it. So you can save it and just come right back to it. Um, but also if you save it as an inventory set, it makes it a lot easier to run a report on it in the workspace module, which I'll do in just a little bit. Um, so I'm going to save this as an inventory set, um, uh, and just and just as Brian's doing that, you know, a, a good point you brought up, and something we'll talk about tomorrow. If there are sets or packages that you tend to go to a lot, mm -hmm. this is a good way to do it. You can set set it as a package, and it's always there. Because I know there's times where maybe somebody has their their New York package mm -hmm. or their you know what, whatever or their um, you know. Um, transit shelter package or things like that. So this is a way to, 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 uh, to start to set those up and have those to go back to as you're continually planning. And, and we'll, we'll definitely talk about that tomorrow mm -hmm. as we're talking about how do you kind of move your workflow from the legacy tools into the Insight Suite. So. Um, and when you're naming an inventory set, you can name it whatever you want. It's really for your reference and you can add some notes for yourself. Um, so I'm gonna save and keep exploring. Uh, that's the option to save. Uh, success. So I've got my inventory set. And speaking of inventory sets, uh, and specific inventory for that matter, uh, if you've got like an Excel sheet with a bunch of either geopath IDs or uh, operator IDs that you want to use, and you want to filter specifically to those units, uh, you can come here to this specific IDs filter uh, and, you know, paste in the appropriate spot. And what it'll do is it will validate whatever you've pasted in and just let you know, you know, we matched against this many you have this one that didn't match uh, and it'll let you know and then you can just apply from there. 
um, but also within this specific IDs filter uh, is this load saved inventory set option. And so these are all my past saved inventory sets, um, including the one that I just saved will be in here and you can edit them, delete them, search through them. So if you have your saved inventory sets, that's where you can find them. Um, but so I've got uh, this group here. Uh, in just a little bit, I'm going to head over to the workspace module and take a look at that, um, at this unit and runner, or at this set and run a report on that. Um, but a couple more new features I wanna talk about before we leave here. Um, let me just pick a unit, let me just pick this one up in the top left since it's just kind of up out of the way, it caught my attention. Um, as Scott had mentioned, there are quite a few new features that have been added to the inventory detail sheets. Um, so let's see, click here for more details. Um, so one of the new things that Scott mentioned was added, we have the material type right up here, which is just, like I said, uh, it's just either if it's a digital unit or if it's a printed or static unit. Um, so that'll show up here. Um, also new or recently re-added is the opportunity overview, as Scott said. And again, this is just based on the Prism Premier segments right now. So this shows you how this unit indexes against these segments. Um, so if you were sort of looking for a kind of audience target and you had sort of a general idea, like a socioeconomic uh, sort of range that these people might fall in, um, you can kind of get a sense of that using this. Um, another new feature that has been added back, uh, and I think maybe we did talk about this in our last one, but I'm not sure, is these top contributing zip codes and top contributing DMAs. And we'll talk about that in a second and I'll map that out. But I also wanted to mention, uh, as Scott brought up, these total impression uh, numbers, this annual average by day of week or by hour of day. Um, and just to reiterate, this is not seasonal data. This is not, uh, this is not day parts, this is not anything like that. This is just the same annual average that we have for everything else in the system, just divided down a little bit further. Um, so it's, it's no new data. It's exactly what we have in the rest of the insight suite, but just presented in a little bit of a different way. Um, and so with these, you can actually deselect certain things. So say you wanted to only look at the weekend and see how that worked. Uh, you know, you can see sort of the, the trends here or just, you know, maybe a Tuesday and a Sunday for something. So you can see that, um, and you can mess with those like that. Um, and if you export this inventory detail sheet to a PDF, uh, all of this carries over as well. So you'll have these little charts uh, come with you. Um, one more thing before I close this, I mentioned I wanted to come back to these um, top zip codes and top DMAs. Um, this was a feature that went away for a little bit, but again, it is back. And so we can see the actual audience footprint of, these, uh, of this particular board. So we can see either by the zip code or DMA level. Uh, and this one's actually kind of interesting. A lot of times with the DMAs, a large majority of the of the impressions are coming from a, from whatever the DMA it's in. But this one actually has a pretty, about a third spread to two different DMAs, which is interesting. Um, and then this one too, these different zip codes. So let's, let's take a look at the zip codes and see what that looks like. Um, and when this map loads up, we'll first be looking at this at sort of a national level. So even though we're going to be looking at the zip code breakdowns, there's still a national, oh, it's taken a bit to load. Um, there's still a bit of a sense of national reach as well. So you can see that at this level as well. Um, there we go. So you can see it definitely clusters around the sort of Ohio area, but there is some weekly national reach. But let's get closer and see the actual uh, zip code boundaries. Oh, look at that. This is, I'm glad I picked this one. This is a good example, actually. As Scott was saying earlier, a lot of times we'll pick one that uh, the zip code it, it basically falls in is not where its highest audience comes from or it's the most audience comes from. So that's exactly the case in this one. Sorry, I'm trying to center this, but it's still catching up to me. So just one second. Um, there we go, it's a little bit better. So we can see here, the uh, this is kind of the local breakdown at the zip code level of where the uh, audience is coming from. You can see this one here, the zip code 45891, almost 20% of the uh, of the zip codes are coming from this, or of the impressions are coming from this zip code. Um, this is just a really interesting this thing to see. It's actually a couple zip codes away, but all of the, uh, a majority of the impressions are coming from here. So again, just an interesting thing to see. Uh, yes, I do. And that's something that you have for every unit that's in here, um, both at the zip code level and at the DMA level. Um, 
that was, I think, the last new feature in the Explore module I wanted to touch on. So we're going to jump into the Workspace module and uh, we'll show you a couple of the new features in there and just kind of show you how to pull a report based on the, the inventory set that I saved earlier. So um, actually, just one thing really quick. So this these 744 units that I have in my inventory set that I just saved, I'm going to put a brief pin in that so I can do I want to show a uh, how to do a market plan, but I'm kind of step away from this scenario for a second, and then we'll do an inventory plan based on this and actually pull a report. Um, I wanted to come back here and show the units I was looking at, but I'll just come back. Um, so here is the workspace module. Uh, right at the top, you've got two big colorful buttons and then this new project button. Um, and basically what you can do with the workspace module uh, this is where the functionality of our legacy systems currently lives. So uh, this market plan right here, create a new market plan, um, that's a market exploration tool just like our OPlan tool was, and that's where that functionality has evolved to. Um, and the new inventory plan button over here will take you to an inventory plan, um, and that's where you can do the ADS kind of functionality and actually, you know, plan and pull specific things against your inventory set. Uh, and I'll go through and I'll show how to do that. Um, so I'm going to make a new project and we'll just call this Ohio posters. So I made a project um, and then within that I need to make a scenario and there's a lot of different sort of use cases as how you can uh, as to how you can structure this but you know for this example maybe Ohio posters is my project and then a scenario would be one audience and then another one that I was sort of comparing two different audiences or uh, two different sets of the same inventory set. I could sort of have subsets or there's just a lot of different ways that you could do this. Um, so like I said, I'm going to put a pin in our example and do a little bit of a different one just to show you how the market plan works. Um, so we'll just call this, we'll do, we'll call this Dayton. We'll do a Dayton uh, example since that was one of the, one of the markets that I was looking at earlier anyway. Um, and so what the market plan allows you to do is basically say, I want to look in this market at this audience uh, against this media type. And I have this goal that I want to reach, so how many units do I need? That's basically what the market plan will help you do, is help you figure out, in order to reach my campaign goal, here's how many units I'm going to need. So let's start off, we'll add our market. Um, and the way, you work, the way you work this is just sort of left to right and then down. Um, and this uh, market thing, uh, market selector works exactly how the one in the explore module does. Um, Again, broken out into DMA, CBS, Air County. I'm going to add that as an individual. We just want to look at Dayton for this one. Um, I'll look at 18 plus. Um, I think I have that in my saved audiences, so I'll use from there. And you can have multiple different audiences. You can run a few different market plans at once, but I don't need person zero plus, so I'm going to get rid of that one. Uh, I'm not going to add an operator. I want to look at everyone who has inventory in the market. Um, and then media type. Uh, again, this mirrors the same new filter structure as the explore module. Um, so if you're ever looking for like a sort of a quick way to do it, or sort of a, if you're looking for more familiar names or something like that, the operator media name might be your best bet. Uh, again, it's all a preference thing. So I'm going to choose, uh, choose posters, add as an individual. Um, I could group different media types together, if, say if you package benches and transit shelters together or something like that, you can make a package of that and it'll tell you how many total units you'll need. Um, so a couple new features that are in here, this thresholds feature. Um, so you can use these sliders to basically set a minimum or maximum or both for either in-market target impressions or in-market target comp index. Um, so say you only wanted units that over-index for the 18 plus target, you could set this to 100, which is the, is the uh, average and then anything over that you would get returned here. So that's one of the new features, this thresholds filter. Um, and then this, this, uh, this feature down here, uh, as Scott mentioned, this is, this is really exciting and this is uh, expanded as well. So before it used to be, you could only plan on TRP for your plan goal, um, but now you can do target and market impressions or reach percentage. Um, and again, these are all for the entire plan. So if you have a four week campaign, for example, and your TRP goal is 100 for that four week campaign, put in the plan total, not the per week total. So always, always know that this is the entire plan length. Um, so for this one, let's do a reach percentage. Say I want to reach 25% of the 
uh, of the 18 plus audience in this market. Um, I'll leave one week effective reach. I'll just leave it as one for right now and I'll hit generate plans. Um, and so then what this will do is it'll basically tell you how many units you need to reach at least your goal. Um, it usually goes a little bit above um, because it has to round up. But once this loads up, we will take a look. So again, I, I'm planning this on reach. So we can see that's actually just 0.01 above what my goal was. So um, you can see I'd get about 91, 92 TRPs if I got if I reached 25% of the audience. Um, and that it says that would be about 25 posters in this market. So what you can do then is if you want to go and explore the uh, explore module and find 25 posters, you can use that to sort of, this is how you can start your planning process. Um, so I'm just going to save my scenario. Uh, I always, you know, pretty much anytime I make a change to a scenario, I do that. I'm going to go back to my overall project. Um, and I want to make, uh, I want to make an inventory plan based on the set of units that we saved. Um, and I see we're kind of coming up on time. So I'm going to try to wrap this up. Uh, for everyone, so don't hold anybody over too long. Um, here we go. So I'm going to make a new inventory plan, um, and again, this is the kind of scenario, or the kind of functionality that we had in our ADS uh, legacy system. So scenario, we can call this uh, combined DMAs. You can really call it anything you want, and you can leave some descriptions for yourself. Um, oops. You know what, that's okay. I can do it in my, uh, in my existing scenario. So one of the good things is if you do a market plan, the inventory plan kind of lives independently. They, they live completely independently of each other. So you can run one market plan and then right in the next tab run an inventory plan and they don't interfere. So um, audience, I'm going to set 18 plus again. Um, and again, if, uh, if you needed to, it opens up the same audience selector as it does in the market plan and the explore module. Um, so for my, mar my market, I'm going to add my combined market from Ohio that I was looking at earlier. So Columbus, Cincinnati, and Dayton add as a group. And I'm going to leave uh, one week here. Um, okay, so these delivery goals, my goals, this is basically just an area where you can kind of leave notes for yourself based on whatever the RFP had. So for my example, I had a 25% reach goal in the last market plan I did. Or if I had a TRP goal, I could set that here. Um, this is just a note section. It doesn't affect anything. It's just notes on what you had as your goals. So then after you set all this up at the top, come down to the add inventory button. And there are two different, uh, three different ways that you can do it. So you can add by geopath spot IDs and just paste those in. Uh, operator IDs, you can just paste those in. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do is load that saved inventory set that I used earlier. Um, so let's see. I know. Ohio posters south facing. So I'm going to add my selected set. And uh, you know, this one actually might take a minute because there was 700 something, actually not too long. Um, so you can see that it loaded up here in the top level here. Okay, so it loaded my 744. Um, you can see on the bottom there are, uh, there are summary metrics. Um, and whatever columns you have in your table here are the only ones that will export. So if you don't see something here in your columns and you wanted an additional metric or something like that, if you go to customize columns, you get all of these available metrics that you can add. Um, and you can add one of these, all of these, uh, whatever you wanna do. So you just have it selected and you hit the over arrow and it'll add it to the bottom. And then from here, what you can do is you can drag it to the top or you can rearrange them or delete ones you don't want and then apply changes. Um, and so again, whatever you have showing here will be what you export. And then from here, if you wanted to, if you didn't want all 744 of these, say you only wanted 10 or something, you could deselect these and then you know, select any ones you wanted. Um, and you can actually make an additional inventory set if you go to, uh, you know, if you've made a change to your inventory set and then you hit save in inventory, you can save it as a new set or save over your existing set. Um, and then I'm again gonna hit save scenario. I always like to save. And say you're happy with your report, you've got the units you want, you've got the metrics you want. To export, all you need to do is hit export scenario and then export as CSV, and then it'll carry over right to uh, Excel. Um, any questions uh, still open that we anybody had? Um, no, I've been trying to 
I've actually answered, uh, I've tried to answer a lot of them via, via direct uh, messaging. So um, I know we're, we're coming to the end, so I don't want to, um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of people I know I want to follow up with in terms of the questions that I'm just starting to, to get to, to the answer. So um, I do want to jump in back into the, oops, back into the um, deck and just plug tomorrow's uh, uh, session again. So tomorrow we're going to be talking about, again, I know I've said it a couple times already on the call, but we're going to um, talk about how to move your the workflow from the work from the um, legacy tools into the um, into the insight suite hopefully and again the, hopefully there'll be a lot of good questions like like today tomorrow as well and then also wanted to announce our, our next set of, of uh, sessions and again uh, if you recall last month we, we we moved slightly the timing of our sessions we used to do them the last Thursday and Friday of every month we moved them to more of the middle of the month to to close to be closer to when the the more of the the updates of the insight suite come out they typically are around the first and second week of the month so we didn't want to have to wait a whole month to be able to talk to people about kind of what are the updates and how, and how to use them so so that's what's um, what's why we've changed it and so we're talking about March 12th and March 13th as the next set of uh, set of sessions as well okay. um, and I do see sorry. tomorrow's session uh, it's, at, it's at noon Correct. Yes, I do apologize. I just noticed that here that this should be noon to 1 p.m. And similarly, I, I, I apologize. The advanced session on March 13th should be noon to 1 p.m. Eastern time as well. So um, advanced sessions are typically we do them from uh, noon to 1. Hopefully more like a lunch and learn. That's the intent of, of those. But, um, you know, one, I know that's not the, the same time for, for everybody. It's not, I know it's not lunchtime for everybody across the country. Um, again, if you've ever, if you missed any of our sessions and, and want to uh, jump back in or just watch them or learn about anything else, you can always go to our, uh, Geo, our Geek Out helpline and, uh, or our Geek Out tab. Uh, there's also always our Geek Out helpline uh, where you can, uh, if you have any questions, if you had a question you didn't get to ask today, um, you know, please feel free to um, to reach out there and we can answer your question for you then. All right. Thanks a lot. Just want to uh, say thank you for everybody for joining and thank you again for all the great questions. We really appreciate them. It makes, hopefully these sessions are helpful for everybody and everybody's getting the answers that they need. Uh, Brian, any, anything else? Any last words? Great. Uh, thanks everybody. And hopefully we'll see you all again back here tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.